What's going on YouTube? It is James Hugh Quick from Learn, Build, Teach. I've been thinking recently that, you know, every form that you create is probably going to need some sort of validation to make sure that users are inputting the right uh, type and formatted uh, information. So in this video, we're going to talk about validating a login form in React. So before we get started, I just want to give a, a quick, uh, just kind of reference for those of you who might be new to the channel. This channel is Learn, Build, Teach, where uh, we teach web development, design, and developer tools. Uh, come out with uh, videos on YouTube as well as courses on YouTube and on other platforms as well. If you guys are interested, uh, you can check out learnbuildteach.com. You can sign up for the newsletter to get updates on uh, articles, videos, and courses when they come out. And then uh, you can check out some of the courses that we've got here as well as uh, links to recent YouTube videos as well. So uh, that is Learn, Build, Teach. Again, if you're new, just wanted to kind of give a shout out for reference for, uh, for those that might be interested. All right, so what we're going to do is create a, a form validator or a validated login form in React. And we're gonna start with a Code Sandbox. So I'm in Code Sandbox. It's an online IDE environment, whatever you wanna call it. And I can start here by uh, doing create a sandbox. This is going to be React, so we'll do create React app. This is one of the really cool things about Code Sandbox. Uh, all of this stuff is already done. I'm ready to go with React uh, all in seconds, which is pretty, pretty sweet. So I'm going to start by creating a file inside of my source, and this is going to be validated uh, login form.js. Open that thing up. Uh, we'll do an import of React from React. And then we'll just do a basic uh, functional component here. So we'll have const validated login form equals, and it's gonna be a function. And we're gonna start off by just having a div. And then inside of that div, uh, just for kind of demo purposes here, we'll just have an h1 that says hello world. And then we'll do an export. So export default validated login form. Now, obviously at this point in this tutorial, I'm assuming you have uh, some background in React and we're just gonna kind of build on top of that to do this validation. So inside of my index.js, instead of the dummy code that they've got here, I'm going to display the validated login form. It'll do an auto import for me right there. Save and we should see the hello world showing up here. All right, that's good. Now we can actually start doing the cool stuff. So what we're gonna do is instead of doing the validation by hand ourselves, we're gonna use a package called Formic and Formic really uh, prides itself on three different things. So getting rid of the three annoying parts of doing this yourself. So it's getting values in and out of form state, it's doing validation and error messages, and then handling form submission. So that's what we're gonna use Formic for. We're also gonna use email validator uh, to do some validation obviously on emails. And then we're gonna take that one step further and use a package called Yup, which is uh, validation as well. It works really well with Formic and it's gonna replace what we did use email validator for. So back in code sandbox, I'm going to add these dependencies. So formic, I'll add, add that one, and then we'll do email validator, and we'll also add, yep. All right, so if you were doing this on your local machine, obviously these are gonna be, have to be npm uh, install commands, so go ahead and do that. Otherwise, uh, we can go ahead and move on. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll import all of these, so formic is a, named export from formic then we'll have import a star as email validator from email validator and lastly same kind of thing email star as yep from cool all right that's the basics right there so uh what this is going to change into also so one last thing i wanted to show you guys let me and that is the uh the finished example of what this looks like um so if we uh just so you guys can see uh, it's gonna have required messages, and obviously this turns red if the e email is not entered, uh, but it doesn't show if I refresh. It doesn't show that until I touch the input, so touch it, and then tab away from it and lose focus, then it shows it. Then if I enter something, it'll say must be a valid email, so it's got email validation, something like that. Obviously, it's probably not a real email address, but it has the format of one. And then uh, if I type in password or touch password and go away, it says password required or no password provided. Start typing, says it's too short, should be eight characters. Then it also must contain a number. And after that, it's gone. So uh, this is the end result. What I wanna do, uh, one, I'm gonna grab all the styles in here. You guys can look at this. You can copy this. Obviously, you'll have a link to this repo. 
Um, so you guys can just copy in these styles to make your form, make sure your forms look uh, at least decent. They're not, they're not super fantastic, but they're pretty good. And then also I uh, just wanted to show in here, there's a login form component, not a validated login form component, just a login form component that I created. And this is kind of the basic way you would do uh, handling forms in React. So you start off with setting your state. Uh, in this case, it's email and password or starting off to empty strings. I can get those things out of the state for my render, assign them to the values of the different inputs, and I would have a handle change function here and a handle submit function. So handle change is when we change stuff on the input boxes. Handle submit is when you actually submit the form. So if you're looking for reference for just what kind of a basic form in React with no formic library looks like, this is what it would look like. And uh, in a second, we're gonna copy some of this code, basically this stuff right here over and then use it uh, with Formic. So to get started, this now is going to become a Formic tag. And then inside of uh, Formic, the opening tag, we're gonna set a couple of properties. One is initial values. And this is gonna be an object that uh, has email to an empty string and password to an empty string as well. And notice this looks a lot like the set state that we did right here. So that's kind of what it's doing for us. It's gonna track that state for us. Then we'll add one more thing on submit, and then we'll say it's gonna be a function that takes in values as a parameter, and then an object that has a, um, a function called set submitting. And then inside of here is where we're gonna actually write our logic. So I'll just do a console log of uh, submitting, okay? So we have that then, uh, it just did some auto formatting for me inside of the formic tag so the child the children of the formic tags i uh, just want to start off with a div and again an h1 of hello or actually let's do this let's do validated login form okay so what's going to happen here is we're going to we have these properties set for the formic uh, component then inside of it is going to be the children of the formic component and it's going to use what are called render props to pass properties to the children that are inside of the formic tag. So what this looks like is, let's get ready to type it out here. Uh, so inside of here, we'll have a function that takes in props and then returns uh, whatever this thing is. And so we're gonna start by deconstructing some values from props. So we wanna get uh, values, touched, errors is submitting, handle change, handle blur, and handle submit. So we'll say those things equals props. So if you're not familiar with deconstructing, uh, you'll definitely wanna take a look at ES6 syntax for deconstruction. So we'll get that, and then after that props, then is where we actually return whatever the, H, the, the kind of HTML that we want uh, this to look like. So this is where we'll have our form stuff. But for right now, we'll just have our kind of dummy text here. So again, what this means is Formic uh, uses render props to pass properties to its children, and then the children have access to those properties and we'll use those in a second. So uh, what I'm gonna do from here is grab the form code here, and you guys, again, you have this for reference, so you can go and grab that too, it's a basic form. Paste that in here, just do a save, and I'll have some errors. So I don't have um, an on submit, I've got a couple of different errors in here. So let's go by, let's go through these and kind of fix them. So uh, with using Formic, we want to use their handle submit, which we deconstructed from props. So it doesn't need to be uh, this. All right, so that one should go away. Then we're saying value is email. In this case, it is going to be values.email. So all of your values for your form are in this values variable. Then we'll come down the handle change. Uh, we can get rid of the this because we've deconstructed this thing as well. So we'll just call handle change there. And same kind of things down here, handle change, values.password, and I think that's it. All right, so that looks good. And the last thing, I just need to make sure this is a type of submit button. Okay, so uh, again, to recap, we've got a couple of different properties on the format component. We set the initial values. We have an on submit, which if we uh, if we now submit, we should see submitting, and that is because down here, using render props, we were able to deconstruct the handle submit function and uh, call it in the on submit of our form. And then we're using 
uh, a couple of other things as well. So a couple of things that we're missing, I want to use the handle blur. So on blur equals, and then we'll call the handle blur from above. Okay, and I'm gonna copy this one for both uh, email and password. And then we can, uh, we're not really gonna dive into this right now, but we could. So you can set your button disabled if is submitting is true. So Formic will keep track of whether or not you're submitting. So if you're doing something asynchronous where you submit and it goes off and it takes a while to finish, you can disable your form while that's happening, which is pretty cool. So we've got that taken care of. Now we can add some validation to our component. So we're gonna start with an option where we kind of do our, our validation ourselves. So what this is gonna look like is we will create a validate function in here. So validate, and then it's going to uh, take a property called values, and then we need to define the function in here. So the way this works is we're gonna start with uh, an empty object called errors. At the end of this function, we're gonna return errors. And what we want to do is for each uh, error validation thing, each, uh, each uh, error that actually occurs in here, uh, we want to add it to this object. So what this is going to look like is errors.email and then say required or something like that. Okay. So we want to uh, do our validation. Then for each problem that we have, we want to update the, uh, the email property for email to be whatever message is appropriate. Then for password, it'll be the same kind of thing. So let's start by, uh, let's start by checking if uh, values.email, and that's where we actually get the value of the, of the email and the input. So if there's nothing input in there, then errors.email is going to be required. So this is just letting the user know, hey, you need to put something here. Else if, uh, and now in this case, we want to use our email validator package to validate that it's a, a for of an email that's that's formatted correctly. So we can check if the email validator dot uh, validate, I think validate of uh, values dot email. So if that uh, is bad, then we'll do errors dot email is invalid email address. All right, so that's all we need to do for password. Then we can do the same kind of thing for password to make sure that it's, uh, to let them know it's required. So this will be password and password. All right, so this is just checking to see that they have a password. Then we can also check something like password. We can check the length of the passwords. We can say if the length is less than eight and less than instead of greater than, so if the password is less than eight, then we can say errors dot password that spell correctly, which is not errors dot password equals uh, password must be eight characters long. And lastly, uh, we might want to check to see if the user has uh, maybe it's a requirement that it's eight characters long and also contain a number. So for this, we can use a little tiny regex here. And what this is saying is uh, basically that there needs to be at least one character that is a number of zero through nine. So the last thing here is to check else if, and then uh, password regex dot test and values uh, dot password. All right, so if that's the case, then we'll update that error message to invalid password must contain one number. Okay, so the way this validate function works, just to kind of reiterate what we did, is you take in the values of the form, you start with an empty errors object, you go through each of the values, do your checks, and then update the messages appropriately. Now notice these are if else conditions, so you'll only get one of these error messages at a time. So if your email is not there, you'll get required. If it's there, but then invalid, you'll get this one down here and so on for password. So that actually works okay, and I think this is important to kind of show you guys what it looks like to run this thing yourself, but uh, instead of running or creating the validate function ourselves, what we're gonna do is uh, use the validation schema, and this is going to use our yup package to make all that stuff a lot simpler, uh, which is pretty nice. So what this is gonna be is we'll do yup dot object dot shape and uh, that's just kind of like a memorization thing this is just how you do it but inside of this we're going to now 
define the input as email and then we're going to say it should be a string it should be an email because yep already has that built in and it's required and we can tell it what the message should be for required and we'll say required so there's email then there's password and we'll do yep dot string dot required and we can just say required here, here as well and then we can do min eight and the message so password is too short should be eight characters minimum okay and lastly we can say matches and then we can go and grab our regex from here this little regex string so that's going to be the first property and the second one is going to be the message uh the error message so password must contain a number so if you look at this thing versus this thing it's obviously a lot cleaner a lot shorter there's a lot of things that uh, Yup already takes care of, like being able to, to uh, compare an email to see if it's a valid format. We had to use the email validator package below. So you are more than welcome to kind of do this all out yourself, but Yup is pretty sweet and it makes it pretty easy to do these validation messages anyway. All right, so we've got the validation done there. Let's see if there's anything. Yeah, now we want to actually uh, sh do a couple things with our inputs one I want to apply a class name to the input we'll just copy this in we're gonna apply a class name to the input if errors up here this is actually coming from that validate function that we just worked on if there's an error for email and email has been touched what we don't want to do is show a, show a, a validation error before the user has actually interacted with an input so if there's an error and the email has been touched then apply the error class so we'll copy the same kind of thing for password so we'll add this down there and the last thing we want to do is actually display those messages so we'll add a little piece of code let me format that a little bit underneath the input and so what this is going to do same kind of check if the uh, email has or email has an error and the email has been touched then we want to add a div with a class name of input feedback and then spit out that uh, spit out that error for the user to see so the equivalent to that for password we'll put down here save that okay so hopefully now when we run this we'll kind of see our validation stuff coming up so if we first start by clicking login we should see both of these things say required if I start to type my email it's going to say must be a valid email so I can do James at learn build teach .com. now that error message goes away now my password is required so if I start typing a password it says too short so I can make it eight characters one two three four five more now it says must contain a number so I can add a number now it's all valid I can submit and I think I meant to uh, do a console log here of the values all right so let's do this whole thing one more time James at learnbuildteach.com, A A A A A A A A, eight, log in. And now we should see the values being printed out below. So at this point in your on submit, you would then handle those, uh, handle that, um, handle the login in whatever process you would do yourself. So you've got access to the email and password. You would then call Firebase or an API or whatever it is you do to handle login uh, and go from there. So in, uh, this is a, a, a little bit longer video than normal, but I think we've got some pretty cool stuff. We did some awesome validation on a login form. You can obviously apply this to any kind of form that you have. Uh, so that's gonna wrap up this video. Again, keep an eye out for more React stuff coming in the future. Really excited to kind of spend some more time there. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one. I will see you in the next one. Hey guys, if you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to the channel. You can also check out learnbuildteach.com to sign up for the newsletter to learn about my latest content. Thanks for watching.